Henry is a strong rally lead and open field commander for archers in Rise of Kingdoms. And unfortunately, he's one of the best open field commanders that I haven't put sculptures into. So in this video, we'll talk about who should put sculptures into Henry, what the best talents are, and what the best pairings are. Let's get it started. Hello, my friends, and welcome back. I'm Chiskel Gaming, and today's video is sponsored by the makers of Rise of Kingdoms. And as I was looking through the list of commanders, I realized I had never made a guide on Henry. And I've covered so many other commanders, especially I would go back and make an additional video when I go and expertise them. But Henry, I only covered in the initial release to the game. And so now we're going to talk about middle of 2023. Is he still a good investment, and will he be a good investment in the future? Now, you can use the timestamps to jump to whichever part you're most interested in. We'll start by talking about the skills, which grounds us in the things we need to know about looking at his open field and rally build, which are pretty much exactly the same. Then we'll talk about his very best pairings and who really should go invest in him. So consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already for Rise of Kingdoms guides and videos, and let's get this started. Henry is a really wicked single target damage commander. And when it comes to open field battling, that's a downside. When it comes to rallying, obviously single target damage is the thing you care about the most. And area of effect damage is also really nice for getting people that are reinforcing a garrison. But divine right active skill 2300 damage factor and reduces the skill damage you take for five seconds by 30%. That is a big Fat reduction of skill damage taken. Wow. Henry, active skill, extremely powerful. From there, second skill, 20% attack, 20% defense. And if you're outside of territory at 20% march speed, that is amazing. That is 60% of goodness on one skill. Hello? That's crazy. The third skill, specific to attacking strongholds and governor cities. Okay. So this is why he's one of the commanders that is good in the open field, but because he's missing area of effect damage and because he's got one skill committed to garrisons and strongholds, this is why a lot of people haven't invested in him. And it says, when attacking strongholds and governor cities, troops deal 30% more counterattack damage. Well, that's only relevant when you're being directly targeted. Remember, you only deal counterattack damage when someone directly targets you. So that means you're the thing the garrison is directly targeting. This is good if you are single rallying, but doesn't do anything if you multi-rally. It doesn't do anything if you're swarming a garrison. You won't do extra counterattack damage because they're not normal attacking you. From there, we are looking at an additional 30% skill damage taken increase for three seconds. And there is a 10% chance to trigger it with a five second internal cooldown. Wow, this debuff when you swarm a garrison is insane. It's so good that I want to put Henry in my lineup just for swarming garrisons. No kidding. The single target damage factor plus the skill damage taken debuff is huge. I want to use him to swarm garrisons. From there, the fourth skill is very interesting. Archers deal 10% more damage. Hello. That's insane. But also when attacked, there's a 10% chance to deal direct damage to the target. Damage factor, 800. Now remember, if the garrison isn't directly targeting you because you're multi-rallying, this does nothing. Uh, it might harm people that try to swarm you, of course. And um, if you are swarming a garrison, the second half of the skill doesn't do anything. They're not directly targeting you. So you're not going to do this damage factor to the target. So he's a little bit weird as a swarmer because some of the sort of value of his skills disappear. Now, this is valuable, of course, in the open field when your march gets targeted. The enemy potentially gets punished, which is pretty cool. We look at the expertise skill over here. It's a passive skill. When you reach 70% of rage, you deal 30% more normal attack damage. Otherwise, you take 20% less normal attack damage. Very good anti-swarm mechanic here, where sometimes you deal more damage and sometimes you take less damage. Very, very cool. This is normal attacks that you're reducing the damage from, which means you have to be getting directly targeted to get any benefit from that at all. But overall, Henry's kit is really good. It's good for swarming a garrison because of the single target damage and the debuff, and it's great for rallying because you're reducing the damage you take pretty substantially from your active skill, okay? 
and also you make the target take more skill damage, which is pretty good. Uh, the thing that wrecks Henry when you rally is getting swarmed. So let's get a look at the talents and see if there isn't something we can do to mitigate that. And he does have Archer, Conquering, and Support. And I'm going to give you one talent build that covers both rallying and also fielding. And it's going to include full Archer Tree and a blend of support. Now, I don't have Henry to level 60 yet, but I do have another commander at level 60 that has the same talent trees that we're going to use, and that is a Monitor. And even though Henry does have the Conquering Tree, I don't think it's correct to put points into there. What I think you should do for both Rally and Garrison is the, oh, no, not Garrison, Rally and Field, geez, is this build over here. And there's a couple things that are very powerful. First of all, if you're rallying with archers, you gotta go all the way up to Whistling Arrows, which means you take all the prerequisite talents along the way. From here, you want only two points into Rejuvenate. The reason you want only two points is because there's a limit to the amount of rage you can get per turn, so you over rage with three points in Rejuvenate. So good news, you save one talent point, you can put it somewhere else. Where is that somewhere else? You go all the way over here for emergency protection. This is big. When troops up by this commander take skill damage, there's a 50% chance that they gain an additional 15% skill damage reduction for the next three seconds. So between the active skill and this skill over here, you could have 45% skill damage taken reduction which is pretty cool. Oh, plus another 9% over here. So that's 54% skill damage taken reduction. Man, that ain't bad. In fact, that's quite good is how I should say that. Unfortunately, you won't probably get the benefit of elixir healing related stuff. Depends a little bit on the pairings, which we'll talk about. Um, for open fielding, you can do a little bit of fun stuff with hasty departure. Otherwise, yeah, you know, there's not all that much benefit. But this is such a clean and easy talent build. And it... it there's not anywhere I would shift points. I really think the damage mitigation over here is absolutely critical, so I wouldn't remove those in order to try to gain more rage. Love this build. Love the the, the simplicity of these talents for both rallying and field. So now we can talk about pairings. And let's start with field pairings because there's a couple really obvious and strong pairings. One is to use Zuge Liang as the primary and Henry as the secondary. The reason I like Zuge Liang as the primary is that you want to very quickly reduce the damage that enemies deal. That's like the first thing you want to do, and it's big area of effect damage. So you use the Zuge Leon as the primary. Henry as the secondary gives you tankiness and march speed, and that is the classic blend that you're looking for in a march. Really good punch with sustain and tank, and Henry brings that sort of sustain and tank. Of course, he's got good single target damage, but he's also got march speed, which Zuge Leon desperately needs. Another great pairing that you can run is uh, Henry primary with Nebu secondary. Nebu does have march speed and defense, but he is oddly squishy, all things considered. So pairing with Henry makes him quite survivable, especially with the support tree as the primary, and the big fat AoE damage from Nebu will do a lot of work when it's protected by Henry. Those are really the main pairings right now in meta, uh, you know, march combos for the open field. Of course, there are other things you can do, and some people do this when they're rallying, and that would be to use Boudicca Prime, okay? Use her as the primary, and Henry as the secondary. And although I do love the support tree, the reason you go with a Boudicca Prime as the primary is that you want to apply this big, big skill damage taken increase, and then hit him with the 2,300 damage factor. Absolutely wicked. Boudicca herself is very tanky. The downfall of this march for open field is that it doesn't do area of effect damage. And that feels pretty weak to me. It does have some amount of healing over here. So, like, it's got sustain. It's got a lot of defense and tankiness. But it's missing that other dimension of just being able to hit lots of enemies all at once. Which I think is sort of a critical component of any open field march. But for rallying, yeah, no, I mean, this is a great combo. I've also seen from a counterattack standpoint for rallying, the Henry with Nebu combo is really crazy. Not only does Henry have the 30% counterattack damage, right? But then, boom, Nebu's got another 30% over here. Really crazy. So I, I like Henry and Nebu. They also both do this revenge damage, which is really crazy. Um, and Nebu even reduces the march speed, which is, you know, okay, only relevant if you're, well, 
it's not even all that relevant to your rally. Anyways, um, the Henry Nebu combo is solid. In terms of other archers, I mean, there's things you can do, but I'm like, why are you doing this? One thing you could do is Henry with Esong. And if you, you know, had certain combinations of archers in the open field where you like needed a home for your Esong, well, let me tell you, Henry primary, Esong secondary, very solid way to get Esong back into the mix with some big damage. But if you were to ask Chisquel Gaming, what are the two best archer open field marches to run right now? Um, there's sort of two combinations you could run, and, and I would say that's probably the best. One would be to run Boudicca Prime with Zuge Liang and then Henry with Nebu. That's probably the way I would run that if I had uh, you know a Henry in the lineup. The other way to run it is to go uh, with Zuge Liang and then Henry as the secondary. And then you can do Boudicca with either Nebu or Artemisia, probably Artemisia or Esong. You got a lot of choices there for, for how you ultimately want to run that. Uh, but that gives Zuge Liang a lot of tankiness to pair with Henry. And you also split the sort of shrug off debuff effect that Boudicca and Zuge Liang both have, so that you get the sort of benefit of that on two different marches, which is really nice. Now, if you're wondering, like, hey, just cool, what, what's, like, meta archer, archer equipment look like these days? I mean, the obvious answer is to go with the full sort of set of archer equipment, and I think that Horn Ring is the way to go. I like Horn and Ring because you want the extra rage. Um, more uptime on the active skill of Henry means that you're going to get uh, more damage mitigation and damage dealt. Seems like a win. And Ring is just all around great damage and also relevant if you're getting swarmed because when you increase all your damage dealt, that means you're also increasing your counterattack damage in turn. Now, this, this set is obviously very, very expensive. So if you wanted a more budget set of equipment, I have great news for you. I can show you that on my restart account. On my restart account, which is now 95 million power, it's creeping back up and we're about to get into KVK and have some fighting. I'll drop back down. But the combo that I like to use, and I have only one archer pair, is the single best archer pair. It does not include Henry. But I'll show you the gear. I use Boudicca with Zuge Liang. And that combo is really good. Now, the equipment is much more value-oriented. Uh, I have it right now on Zuge Liang. I use it in Canyon, Zuge with Isong. But you go for the two-piece bonus, Dragon's Breath, Chest, and Gloves. Legendary, Okay. Stick with the epic legs and the epic helmet because you get a two-piece bonus and you get archer defense on uh, both of those pieces. And anywhere I can get defense, I'm all in. Archers often get focused down because they do lots of area effect damage. It's, you know, big threat on the board. So I like to stick with the defense. So the defense two-piece bonus uh, from the epics is amazing. Save yourself a lot of materials. Health on the boots is amazing, man. Come on. That's so good. So we run that over here, okay? Health on the boots. And I have a legendary weapon here. Um, and that's because, yeah, I tried to shoot the moon. Hopefully you get a talent when you make it, blah, blah, blah. I didn't. Um, but I made the Hydra's Blast. And I'm probably done with archer equipment for quite some time. I, I, don't, I don't intend to do anything else with archer equipment here. If I were to make more stuff, I could make the KVK helmet and then the set legs and set boots but i feel like that's maybe a slight upgrade i i don't even know how much better it is so just to show you i believe it's called the golden age that's your epic option for a weapon that is just really really good for a really long time archer defense it's like 17 percent defense when it's crit that's amazing um and some people would even say that's pretty comparable to the 25 percent attack that i am wearing now so you can save yourself a lot of materials and just stick with the golden age and so only a small number of legendary armor pieces actually need to be made here. Just the two armor pieces. And you've got an amazing archer set up and running. And for this reason, it's very interesting to consider just using multiple archers, uh, you know, marches, because their equipment at the epic tier is just that freaking good. It really, really is. Now, at this moment in time, I'd say the right number of marches for the open field is two. So who should be investing in Henry. And this is an interesting question because if you're rallying, I think the choice is obvious. You gotta go for it, right? You gotta go for it. But if you're not rallying, I'll point out that he comes from the Mightiest Governor. 
might be a little bit more tricky to unlock him. Uh, there are other events where I think if you already have him unlocked, you can get more of his sculptures. And I don't think he's due to go to the daily special offer anytime soon. So if you did get your hands on Henry, who else should work on him for the open field? Gosh, I mean, if we just look at what archers are out there, we have so many good options. He just feels great, but not necessary. For example, we know Boudica and Zuge Liang are the best open field archer march in the game. So there's two archers down. And then from there, you've got Esong and Nebu, which if you wanted, you could just pair them together and be done. And yeah, it's a little squishy, but if you're not getting targeted, you're doing crazy damage. That march is really good. Henry, I think, is an upgrade commander from either the Nebu or the Esong in that combo. Putting him in does make the combo better. But I also think that, I don't know, if you have some patience, we might get a leadership commander sometime soon that you're like, hey, that's really exciting. I want to use that. Or we could get another archer commander from the time of this recording. I mean, it could be almost a year away before we get another archer. So you do have some time. Uh, if you really wanted, I suppose you could even avoid investing in a commander like Henry by going with something like if you had Nebu, you could use Mehmed as the secondary, which initially seems really weird. But then when you go and you look at the museum buff, it's like, wait a minute. So you're telling me that Nebu with Mehmed means that I'm going to get 30% extra health and 10% more skill damage. And sure, you know, sure, Mehmed doesn't have any march speed, but man, like that's a compelling combo right there. So I think that for most people, Henry is not actually necessary unless you're going to rally. And that's probably why we don't see more of him because at this moment in time, although Henry is extremely good, you only really need him if you're rallying, or uh, and that's pretty much it, actually. I was going to say or garrisoning. I don't know why I have that stuck in my head, the two things together. But for most people, you just don't need the Henry. And that's why most people haven't invested in him. Um, so I think he is really, really good. But in a world in which, you know, sculptures are very limited, most people probably don't put them here. If you enjoyed the video, do me a huge favor. Throw a like on the vid and consider subscribing. If you're looking for the best archer pairs in the game, as of right now, I'll have a card in the end screen for that video. Alternatively, if you're looking for a video showcasing all of the best open field pairs in the game, card in the end screen in just a second. Check it out.